Greetings everyone, and Grade here from another H Fires 4 replay. Spawn on the bottom right side as a Cyan Mongols, we have Beastie. Spawn on top left side as the Green Chinese, we have a foreign name. Oh, well, since I've seen regular Chinese, most of the time I just see Zuzi's Legacy. But Chinese do have their benefits over Zuzi's Legacy, such as the access to archers. As archers are pretty good versus the Musafati Wars and Lance Connects. As well as Spearmen. Moggle persuade forward. Are we going to see? Yeah, we're going to see a Spearman rush here. Let's see. When it comes to map generation, Green does have two gold deposits right here. Quite a bit of gold. Boar. Moggle's boar. Moggle has a uh, deer and gold next to each other right here as well. Very nice. Oh, here got deer deposit next to the trade post. And we got the Mongol villager pushing away forward. He's not buying the collect of any gold from this gold vein. He's going straight for ta uh, taxes for his gold. Oh. But he also invested, of course, the uh, official does cost like 50 gold as well. So he's actually very far away from aging up without this is simply not enough taxes. He doesn't have a lumber camp to collect up taxes as well. So this outpost may go up. Then we got a pair of spearmen and escort. And testing this gold deposit is actually going to be very useful now. He's going to supervise the production of the spearmen to rapidly respond to the Mongolian spearmen. He has five in the field, so far he just has one, three more on the way. You can get another one queued up now. Bouncer is not building villagers either, so that's a bit of a problem right now. He's not building. Okay, he does get the villagers start being built once again. As trying to counterattack, he's able to use supervise a rapidly producer spawns force. It's going to have a Mongol player is going to have to. He's focused straight down the villager, allowing the spearman to get some free damage on in. Oh, scout trying to get some torches on in. He has five spearmen here. Mongol player got some free hits there. Does take some hits in return though. Outpost does get cancelled. And the Mongol player may want to fall back. He has five spearmen here. His opponent has six spearmen. He has probably a good idea that the Mongol player sort of fall back and just harass. I don't think he will be able to pull out the, the outpost. Mongol player does not have enough gold at the moment. Almost has enough gold. Chinese players are very far from aging up. Ooh, Green's getting some free stabs here. He sees that his opponent pull out a uh, good number of spearmen. He has pulled out seven. It's probably a good idea just to fall back a spearmen to his town center. At this point in time, he's not going to win. He's going for the silver tree now. A good number of sheep will claim. They're going to be led to the glory and not to the slaughter. Right. A lot of coin there. He is still relying on taxes. He does have more now two sources of taxes and four, nine. I think that yeah, that's enough taxes to get an age up. He needs a collect of the taxes now. Oh cons down. There's 40 taxes, so now he has enough to age up. And now he's going for the Imperial Academy, which allowed him to pull out officials outside from another location, then interrupting his villain villager queue. We may see some master, uh, early traders for the Mongol. At least he can always just throw the silver tree in the corner. And now he's going to herd the deer. He doesn't have to herd the deer too far. Honestly, just herding them to a pile right there is not half bad. As long as they're just in a central location, he always just plop down a gear next to the pile of corpses. He's going a bit far. Honestly, killing off the deer now wouldn't be half bad because the gear can be redeployed right there to help provide the gold income and the deer income. He's going a little bit too far, I would say, with the deer, honestly. And one of the deer... Oh, he's just going to start stabbing the deer now. 
The silver tree is now migrating down south. He may not have the area of, uh, scouted, but the uh, silver tree itself can scout for himself. And yes, yeah, a little bit messy the location of the deer. Oh. Scout does spot the silver tree. And also, it may be a good idea just to plant these wooden spearmen right where the silver tree is going to deny harassment or to slow down any sort of harassment there. Got now the archer range and the stable route being deployed out there. Got a barracks. Right now, he does have quite a bit of stone sword on up. One for times two archers. We go for uh, kick go for our times two Keshik. Yeah, he is going for times two Keshik as well. He's going for a quite a sizable transition to archers and Keshiks. His one does have a good number of spearmen, so the times two archers will be useful against them. You will see the Barding of the Sun, so you may want to get out Siege Engineers. I believe, sure, I saw a blacksmith. No, we do not see a blacksmith. This is how I play the Mongols with uh, the Silver Tree. You Okay, he is keeping a garrison right there, because this is the only way you can keep your Silver Tree uh, alive. You need to get a small garrison of spearmen, because you can't pull out any, uh, any sort of defense. They're wounded, they can stop the harassment of horsemen or delay any sort of harassment there to send a response force. The Chinese player is now going for hardened spearmen. And now we do have survival techniques for the Mongols. It's also playing with the deer up here. It does have an outpost somewhat close by, which is better for the Yam network than to keep the villagers safe. But they can keep the villagers safe. Now I've got some traders being plotted out. The Mongol player just needs to keep his opponent crowd into his into his keep his opponent's crowd into his own base, and that way he can make sure that his trade line does not get harassed. That's the best way to keep your trade line uh, safe as the Mongols, other than station a small little garrison. It's just simply be aggressive. Offense the best defense. Of course, if you lose too much, then you are screwed. Guess a bit of wood right there. Maybe a good idea to go for a blacksmith or some pastures. Going for pastures early on can give a nice little stockpile of sheeple. To be led to glory. Traders not being pulled on a field. Their trade route path is not great. He's hitting a gear there. He's going to try to collect up this wood, or maybe he's just trying to collect up Pumba. Got this force moving around. It's a nice little mixed force. The catchers have to keep their distance. The archers are using the arrow arrow, which will get another volley. Keshik's keeping them nearby, keeping Spearman nearby to the archers. Great volleys there by the Mongol. Uh, spread out his damage quite a bit, but got good damage nonetheless. It took hardly any damage in return, and the Keshiks can heal themselves by saying throwing some torches on a nearby building. Local doggo does go down. The spearman could go around and, finish and pick off Pumba to aid the villagers, which is probably a good idea. Their value is very, very diminishing to say the least. And now that high health spearman is getting hit at first, so that's very good for Cyan. The boar has been killed. Gear being collected. The steer has not been touched. Once he collects the coin, he can plant the gear right there, and that'd be a good spot for the gear for the deer. Mongol still moving around. We see another village. Stops the village. As it's charging the way forward, he does spot the second town center now. He does have the silver tree, which is a good alternative to producing civilian workers. Albeit pretty expensive. Because after all, each one of those traders is 100 resources. But this max range trade route will result in better production. And if he gets his full 15 silk road, I think they will be twice as good as a villager. So they will be cost effective versus the villagers. But until that point, they will be not very cost effective. He is actually building large number of markets there, so he's going to pay full value for these guys as well. He is going heavy in trade, super heavy. He does have a decent force here, including a wounded spearman. 
Es war doch für sind News. And now it's going for range damage. We got range damage from the Mongols. Once he sees those Zoom Schnoos, he really should go for range armor. This is a higher bit of multiplicative effects there. Of three. He does have a small number of uh, spear on the field. He does still need some spear in the gauge the Kashyyyk. And spear really not entirely bad versus archers. Just not great. If they get in the range, they can stab him. I go for more walls there. That was just a speed error there. Ooh, there was a misclick. Lost a couple, took some volleys there. I think he was still losing Archer because he was on an intercept path. And okay, there is a scout there, so you can't use the bushes there as an ambush location. Now goes for range armor. He probably should just wait until the range armor is complete because right now these Zinch news are going to be very effective. Even versus the Keshex. Because right now they would do 5 damage per shot, so they'll do 6 damage per volley against Keshex rather than just 3. He's probably going for more zoom schnoos. Got a good number of traders now on the field. How many does he have? 26. So he has a silk row. He has a massive amount of, in of gold income at the moment. He has enough to age up. He's going for the curl tie. But now his trade is going to be hit. He needs to... Of course, he doesn't see this exact moment. And full spear in here, which does pose a threat to a small number of Keshex. He needs to get these traders. Okay, he's starting to micro the traders. And now these Zinch News are going straight down south. He does have a single outpost here with a arrow slip. Those Keshex are taking too much damage there. He has a good number of archers. If he age up, get access to the various advanced age, he's throwing them experiment into that uh, outpost. They'll all see just do best in there. They just keep the spear in there. They're not going to do much in this engagement. They are wounded and not even Harden. They actually will take on the scout, which actually is very important. It does man hop back inside and now will be wiped out. He has task a good number of traders away. Trader does go down there. These traders trying to keep their distance. Now got the Venom Keshek Venom Archer Research. And as well, no, he should go for range armor, not for range damage. I suppose for the catches don't need the extra armor, so it'd be better to keep his archers alive. As Keshiks do have good armor, especially with the veteran Keshik resource, so it probably is a better guide, good idea for the better range damage instead. So my mistake. Yes, other curl tie here, giving some much needed health for Jen. Science lacking quite a sizable military force. You could go for a horseman, honestly, as well. Horseman will be a more a cheaper alternative. Right now, he just simply does not have the economy going. He has no gold income due to the lack of traders actually being active. He will get a volley of around traders there, giving some massive amount of coin he needs. You guys saw see Pumba there rotting on the ground, and he does take out one of those guys. Just pulling out scouting falcon. Green's falling back. He does not like the fact he's down in age. So he's keeping his distance. Green is starting to realize that the fact that his opponent has fully withdrew out of the region. Improved siege engineers could be incredibly effective right now, so we can quickly pump out some Maganels. He does not have regular siege engineers. Astronomical clock tower now being researched. Single Zinch Nu getting some damage there. He does have an arrow slip. He could try drawing them into. And now both players in Castle Age. The Mongol player has a small window of opportunity. He does have a tra uh, traitor there, and this. Uh, Engineer will go down. Got these forces pushed way forward. 
Does have both range armor and range damage. No melee damage or armor at the moment. We fight against the palace guard, so that would be useful in the future. Now he sees that big group of Zinch noose. The curl tie. He's set up. He's trying to set up right there. He does not have the fast movement speed there. Kesh is trying to charge away forward, but got a number of defensive spearmen. On goes down there. No arrow. I think it was fired or not, not recently. Does have some mana arms mixed on in. Does have a the curl tie sitting on up there. We'll take a bit of damage. On a fast pack up and movement. The superior mobility. Zinch new now engaging these forces. He's locking garrison down here. Catch his move down there. Archer is microing around. His pearl tie took some damage. Maybe send a villager there to repair it. Oh, here we've got the Keshex. Good finds these other villagers. Those find those other villagers. This Keshex does take a bit of damage. With the health per swipe, he will take quite a bit of damage there. But the arrows are doing decent damage. 8 damage per shot, 2 damage per arrow. Now some full retreat. Ooh, Keshex or Trader goes down there. Keshex now seeing pretty good volley. Going for the Step Lancers. Ovo, fresh Ovo on the large stone deposit now getting hit. Improved Wisdom Arrows, something that I will say most Mongol players don't go for enough. After all, that could give him 12 seconds of plus two, plus two armor. And make it so his archers will only will take a lot less damage. Putting up the range armor to four. Basically reducing the damage they receive from the Zinch News by 40%. For 12 seconds. Ovo is set ablaze. Ovo goes down. Do have a Magnal on the field by the Mongol player, and does have some shamans as well. Trying to collect some relics. Science picked up two relics. Find some palace guards there. Kesh is gauging, but now there's a good number of spearmen. These Kesh need to fall back. Pearl type one in the center of the map now. He's manly tasking his traders around, keeping the money coming on in. Got a shaman distraction wall low. Does get a great volley there for uh, Maganel. Pearl tie being repositioned. That also improves the damage of these Maganels, so they do plus 21 damage times 3 versus range. Let's find some of these veteran Zinch News. Some of these Keshex are going a little bit too far forward. He has two Maganels in this formation, which can annihilate groups of these Zinch News. Got the arrow, arrow. Miss there. Nessa B is between four, but now the Curl Tie is also advanced way forward. Does get the float on out. Gains some massive health and damage capabilities. Maganels finds a volley. Gets a good volley there. Alaskar trying to hit the Maganels. They do see some health regen for the Curl type, and now they're trying to fall back. That Maganel does go down. There's a big round of traders. Got to make sure that uh, <laughs> these guys don't go down. Another round of traders here. Looks like he has about 30 traders active. 35. Siege workshops there. Trying to go for more Maganels. Oh, failed to deploy there because that's Mongol buildings. And this also gives them much needed health regen in all these forces. Has a good number of Zunchnus there. Mixing in some crossbows as well. Got some villagers here trying to tunnel through this region. He has got some balls there for some odd reason. 
Shaman's now being bitten by the wolf. Wolf is demanding some head pants, but he's not giving them five of these uh, traders there, which could be intercepted by this uh, sheep there. The Shaman will spot this. This is a high priority target now for the Mongol player. You could try to find the silver tree over here. Green Wolo there. Couple of nice stuff here. We'll take up the monk. Now going for a line of palisade walls. Let's also trap his other structures, his trade posts here. You can deploy another trade post here in order for our safer but weaker trade market. But this trade, but this side of the line of walls there, he does uh, hold ground there. Hold ground this one here as well, but it is a miss. Deploys another hold ground there. Now with the markets and everything uh, escaping on out of there. Just getting out of there, go for a weaker trade route right now is probably a good idea. Maybe there's a couple of these traders. Silver tree not being redeployed on out. You know, it's going for the whistling arrows, the improved whistling arrows. Perfect. Guess we'll give him 12 seconds of a massive buff, which most conflicts don't last or usually decide within the first 12 seconds. So this will help him determine the, uh, the conflict within the first 12 seconds better. Looks like these guys now have a 45 gold drop off at the max range. It was like 70 something, close to 80. Not particularly great, but it is still quite good and better than nothing at this moment in time. I still say you need to send a villager there to start. That's a single villager to start repairing the Curl Tie. Nothing too fancy. Ooh, look at that health regen from the Curl Tie. I originally thought when I first started playing the game, the Curl Tie was best to use to heal from nearby trade caravans. But you can always do that with the improved Yelm Network. Agonels, find a volley there. Does use the arrow arrow, but at this point in time, it's not being very useful. He's maintains distance. The speed arrow would have been much better. Catch his way forward in good numbers. There's only six spearmen to put with the Chinese player, so he's lacking spearmen. As well as even Palace Guard. So not the spear race trying to age up now. Does not have siege engineers, nor improve siege engin engineers. Magnus do outrange keeps a fire, so you can try, try sitting it down with Magnus, but no, he's going just straight to his opponent's base instead. In which green's going to be counterattacking as well. Bit of a base race situation. Carl Ty is sending up over here. Second site been captured on up. And these traders could hit, get hit once again. Those big wave of traders are right there. The manly task way. White stupid not being flown enough. Improve his existing pastures as well as all the stone income. Villagers being tasked into the garrisons. Some of the villagers will go down. Magnells. Oof. That was a not great hit there. He does not have raid bounties. That's one of the few times where raid bounties would actually be useful to start torching down all the farms. Trying to break down through this area. The archers and all that stuff should be hitting the palace guard. Now they're hitting the palace guard. Magnals do bone sandwich structures. It's getting very messy. Just lost a good number of villagers there. Does build the white stupa. Traders now moving around, trying to find some sort of income. This is various outposts here. Magno engaging. It's getting very messy for here and very messy over here. Keshik's head took a bit of a beating. Magno's here are pretty healthy. That secondary out town is starting to go down. Tra traders moving around. Agonels just need to be A moved in this region to start attacking anything. He does have 13 pastures being proved by the white stupa. Should be able to sort to about 49 villagers. Let's call it even 50. And he's actually out of villagers for Agnello. He has plenty of pastures for 
for his villagers. Let's leave it at that. He needs more villagers now. He has plenty of wood for another town center, so maybe better to go for a secondary town center. Green's army is starting to get disintegrated there. Green's army is basically gone. Some of these traders are getting hit. They don't receive, you know, classified as cavalry. They don't receive anti cavalry damage. Zushu's getting some hit there on these villagers. Both sides are losing a lot. More farms are going on down. He's lacking a large amount of siege weapons. to engage these farms easily, like batting rams. There's all three, uh. Relics there. He could try parking this near the white stupa to get or upgrade this uh, monastic shrine to get the improved hide barn. Science right now denying all the food income for green. Oh, guys, can you hit there? The improved yam network could be very useful to get some health regen. Right now, green actually does have a handful of those on food, more than the Mongol player. The Mongol player has a large number of traders. So there's plenty of income for Keshiks, which are even costs. Oh, no more than heavy food, unlike knights. And now we do have the stone commerce, get an extra stone for trade. There's pl plenty of stone stored up, maybe going for the improved search on very stuff. Going for alternative uh, food collection there. We got a good number of Maganels here. Bill's just getting hit by the, the large number of Palace Guard. These Maganels are not going to be useful in this situation. They're a bit too mobile. It's a good volley there. That was a bit spread out of damage. He needs to get some Bill's inside the town center. That's yeah, not looking good for Cyan. It's not looking good for Green either. It's getting very, very messy. Maganel there can hit by a palace guard. Some traders going down. Got some horsemen here. Advanced spring gold upgrade. Taking some damage out on everything. He's not gonna raid bounty. He should have gotten improved raid bounties. That could easily fuel up his economy. Try to make it hit here. Green's army force is getting cleaned up. Another round of palace guard. The crossbows here on defense may not be enough. I was just trying to get some other villagers here. Claim some more stone. Has some coin here. Spirit wave will go down. Not sure how many landmarks Green has left. There's still the astronomical clock tower, town center, Pure Academy, so it still has plenty of landmarks remaining. Big round of trade there. Again, out those traders down there. A couple more horsemen there, finding some villagers. I got the uh, elite Keshik research. That's the screen goals there. To engage. Does got one of the Maganels. Take out these Maganels. This is important because this is where his primary siege damage is coming from. Just lost two of them there. And screen goals are way back there. Just lost all of his Maganels. Keshik's engaging over here on the palace guard. Does go down. Does not have wood for plant battery ramps nor improved siege engineers or just regular siege engineers. Got a keep here. Going for boiling oil. Traction trebuchet would be more than enough to take that out. We got a bombard. Got a good palace guard here, so blue's looking blows and good traders. Horseman gets cleaned on up. Another round of palace guard from the field. Going for more crossbows of what he generally needs. He does have incendiary arrows, and as well as all. Nope, doesn't have the final round of blacksmith research. Yovo could be built there. He has plenty of pastures for his villagers currently. May, this, may take out some of these villagers here, not really paying attention. 
more walls there. He's trying to get out some more outposts. Got a couple Keshiks over here to support him out. The elite Keshiks. Does not have a uh, biology, nor improved biology. And the Coral Tiger's falling back. Pulling the Coral Tiger here could give his uh, unit some extra health regen. Bombard starting to receive massive damage. Bombard does go down there. Keep this fine at the moment. More Bombards being put up by Cyan. Troll Tai has been redeployed. Science has a sizable force here. Could be micro to get some extra valley out of it. All Scar just charging away forward. They do have good movement speed. Especially for better come crossbows. Another on up one on the field. This is the majority of Green's army right here. Green has a good amount of uh, resources right now. Going for the Imperial Palace, which is the White House. Does not put up the Ming Dynasty. Not. We'll put up the Yuan Dynasty. Another Bombard there. Going for redeploying gear. Does get interrupted. Does get another gear here. So he does at least have a wood drop off. And migrating mass number of gears are a pain in the butt. Yuan Dynasty now been has now been activated, allowing these uh, palace guard to move at almost sonic speeds. Bombard engaging right there has a good escort. Catch will spot all these palace guard. May realize they're moving extra fast now. Military cat is now being researched by the Chinese player. Biology for the longer player. Bombard is an A move forward and it will get annihilated. Try to hit this keep. Gonna redeploy this uh, market over here near the white stupa in order to get it out. He improved stone commerce. He has quite a bit of stone stored up in the moment. Going for another ovo because might as well get it out in the field. Maybe a good idea to go for some times two hand cannoneers or crossbows. At this point in time, he has plenty of popular space, so he doesn't need the efficiency of the hand cannoneers. Could just go for uh, crossbows for cost effectiveness. Market does go down. The silver tree has plenty of health to work with. Those Keshiks will get killed off. Those Palace Scars are only slightly slower than, than the Keshiks. And if they get the attack order charged uh, effect, they will of course move quite good. Got these Palace Scars trying to hit the Bombards once again. Got more Bombards being upgraded. Pearl Ties and Redeploy going for Chemistry now. Down south. Silver Tree. There's a bit of fire there. Look at that health regen. We've got now the Curl Tide engaging. The Hand Canyons have good damage. For the damage by plus 20%, so this Hand Canyons near the Curl Tide get plus 14. Now got the uh, additional barrels for the Nest of Bees. may see court architects relatively soon. I'm so sort of surprised we don't see that at the moment. Oh, the Pax Moncalia, whatever it's called to improve outpost. 
Now I've got the Palace Guard streaming their way forward. Still plenty of coin the map for either player to flame through mining. Science Army just gets annihilated there by the Palace Guards. Palace Guards don't need much coin, they're more of a food based unit. Outpost can upgrade of mass bombards and can really use the improved uh, health on his uh, outpost right now and the fire armor. The uh, yeah, Pax Molokon. Ak Mongolia. And signed us back to the game now. This is Anne Great saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.